So, I realized I've been making T2 Book Club videos about books that I was currently reading, and I haven't done book club videos about books that I've already read. So, I thought of this idea, kind of like a book club, but instead of being only about books, people would bring TV shows or games or whatever books that are really underrated, like nobody's ever heard of this, but it's like my own little thing that I know about, and it's like nobody ever talks about it, but it's one of the best things I've ever seen or read or played. And uh, so I thought I would talk about my favorite sci-fi book series. Maybe Ender's Game edges it out, but this is the Troy Rising trilogy by John Ringo. And I bought it because of the cover, because it's got all these spaceships fighting this big giant ball with a Spartan face on it. <clears throat> so it's called Troy Rising. The second book is called... Is it second? Citadel is the second one, I think. It's also got a bunch of spaceships fighting a bunch of shit with the face. And then the Hot Gate. Check out this cover. Look at all the missiles coming at this thing. And, you know, when I say it's the best sci-fi books I've read, I haven't read the James Corey books that The Expanse is based on, but I've seen all the TV shows. <clears throat> and I think this edges it out slightly. Of course, the uh, Expanse books probably has better characters. But these books, the thing that makes them so good is the exponential power gain. Like, you start from humble beginnings. I'm going to explain it to you. And then, as things progress, it exponentially gets crazier and crazier. And this guy gets more powerful and more powerful. Builds bigger and crazier things. Kind of the same way that Dragon Ball Z starts out. Like little Goku as a kid and then he gets more power and then his power level is over 9,000 and then he's going Super Saiyan and he's doing all this crazy shit with Super Saiyan 2 and he's time traveling and teleporting and all this crazy shit and it gets out of control. That's what this is. This is Dragon Ball Z for science fiction. <coughs> so, what is the story? Now, if you don't like spoilers, I know I do a lot of spoilers when I do these book reviews. Pretty much spoil the whole thing. So, you can take it right there and leave it and just go read it. But here's what here's what happens. It's kind of like Stargate. The book starts out, an, an alien race. This is an alien race that doesn't even participate in the book at all. It's just like an an omni, like an omni uh, benevolent, omni omniscient. What's the one for powerful? Oh, mm, no, they're a powerful alien race. They go around putting stargates in star systems that has life in it, like civilizations. So, you're on Earth, all of a sudden, there's this big ring that people can come through. Other alien races can use it. The alien race that puts them out, they don't even care what happens to them. They're just going around seeding these fucking... They think it's a good thing to like make a network in the universe to connect all of the civilized races and... You know, if they have trade, if they go to war, if they become friends, if they don't, it doesn't matter to them. They're just putting out the rings, and then that's all they do. You don't even hear from them ever again. But there are races out there that are that level of powerful that you don't even you don't even don't even get into it. But this one guy, he's like a science fiction writer or a comic book writer or something, and I guess he had like a podcast or a video or something. So at some point. His podcast gets broadcast out into space, and aliens are a fan of his, but he doesn't realize it. So this one race of aliens are kind of like pigmen, I think. They're called the Glatoon. They show up. Luckily, they're not trying to kill us. And they go to the governments of all the countries of the world, and they say, we're looking for stuff to trade, and they bring out all their resources, you know, their gold and their minerals and their oils and all this kind of stuff like that. And it's like, oh yeah, we've seen all that. It's just basic common elements. We don't really care about any of that. And they get ready to leave. And then this one guy, he has like an in with him because they're fans of his comic books podcast or whatever. <clears throat> he says, let me, uh, let me get some stuff together and I'll put it in the back of my truck. He goes to the grocery store, gets a bunch of shit, puts it in his truck. And just random things from the grocery store. And he takes it to this guy. And he's like, I'm going to show you a bunch of this stuff. You just test it out and see what you think about it. And maybe it's just of interest to you. And it turns out... These pig men <laughs> love maple syrup because they don't have it anywhere else in the universe. Even in the Earth, 
the only place you get maple syrup is in like Vermont and a few places in Canada. It's like a real small place that comes out of these trees, right? So he's like, holy shit. And this guy gives him a handful of atomic circuitry. This is kind of circuitry that's like based on atoms. Like we've been trying to create for years. So a whole billion dollar industries would spring up from this if you reverse engineered it. <clears throat> so he gets this handful of atomic circuitry. Nobody else on earth has it. He sells it to different countries, I guess, to reverse engineer it. He becomes instantly the richest man in America. So, what does he do now that he's the richest man in America? He buys all of the maple syrup farms and any land that could grow maple syrup bearing trees. And now he's cornered the market. And now he's the richest man on earth. And he has he keeps trading that maple syrup with these aliens for the atomic circuitry. And he gets even more and more of it. And now he's the richest man on earth. He has more money than the United States has. And they don't like that. <laughs> so he gets at least... He gets... This is what's so good about it. It's like... It's just starting out, man. This is just starting out. This is before you even get super soon. So he gets uh, one of these aliens to take him up to their uh, space station and another... Uh, solar system he gets uh, cybernetic implants and he gets like a couple of these things called paws they're like small spaceships like cheapo fucking clunker spaceships but they're they're spaceships you know I say don't have any spaceships that can go beyond their orbit and stuff <coughs> so from that he starts uh, like to um, um, controlling or like mining or yeah I think he starts out like mining an asteroid and he gets some guys to help him. And, uh, let's see, this is getting crazy. At this point, he realizes if you can, he can make these mirrors out of, when you're burning an asteroid, you get this sand kind of stuff that spoil, spills off of it. And you take that sand and you focus the sun's energy onto it, and you melt it down into mirrors. And you use those mirrors to focus the sun's energy even more and make hotter lasers. To make mirrors faster and bigger. So he keeps making more bigger l mirrors. Setting them up in these big arrays. That has like these little computer controlled AI jetpacks on the back of them. So he can move them around the solar system. And fix them in any array he wants. Focus the laser anywhere he wants. So now he has like a death beam. He can destroy the earth if he wants. The United States can't do shit with him. So he's like most powerful man on earth. And he's got like this power that they can't do shit with so eventually get off me i'm doing a book report <laughs> he gets a better spaceship and he gets this computer ai like a real artificial intelligence it's like that could control all of the systems on earth if he wanted to pretty much so there's also these things called fabricators that the glatoon have it's basically a big factory that the AI runs, computer generated factory, you just put metal into one end of it, you put like a blueprint code into it, and it makes whatever you put into it into that thing. So what does he do? He gets one of those, and then he, and first thing he does is have it start fixing itself and repairing itself because it's an old shitty version. And it like upgrades itself and stuff, it gets really good. He's like, okay, now I want you to make parts of another fabricator. And then he uses his other uh, jetpack things, his paws, to put them together. And he makes another fabricator using that fabricator. And he uses those two fabricators to make more fabricators and so on and so on. So he's got a bunch of fabricators. Well, it takes like a really long time. He doesn't get like a shitload of fabricators. But the whole time he's still making more and more mirrors, getting bigger. He's getting like in the petawatts of energy, of laser beam focusing energy. He's got these different kinds of arrays. He's got the big, the BRD and the ARD or something like that big fucking array he has names for all of these different arrays of mirrors that he's focusing on his lasers so um at one point <clears throat> there's this alien race that is not friendly that wants to come through the ring and they start a war with the, the earth so live free or die the earth pretty much has to depend on him to defend itself from these other alien races that's what the the lasers come in and he ends up like slicing these big ass fucking alien ships in half with his laser beam because it's so powerful at this point. And that pisses him off for the second book. They come back like with a frenzy. So he has to even make an even crazier defense. So all these spaceships, he, he starts building spaceships for the uh, United States, the, the Navy. 
And that's what Citadel's about. It's basically, this is more not about him so much as about this woman who's in the ma- the Marines or the, the Navy. And she's like a salvage operator and they like cut apart all these ships that he blew up in the first book. That's one of the main jobs of the Navy is like getting this the salvage from the first book's destruction that he wreaked upon them and like back engineering those and making these big constitution class spaceships for this citadel that he's making. So the citadel he finds this really big ass asteroid and he uses these paws, these gravity like he has like a track or a, um what do you call that thing? Um where you suck things in, one of those beams that ray that sucks things in. He he pulls this comet into a hole in the asteroid that he drills and then that water gets in there it gets hot and expands and it makes it blow up into a big round shell and I'm talking about this are a giant asteroid so the, the scale I'm talking about is like the walls the thickness of that thing is like a mile thick that's not like 12 inch steel that's like a mile thick steel I'm talking about and like he drills holes through that mile steel using this pedal watt laser that he's got and it's like it's really dangerous if you keep it on too long but <laughs> it's like you got stuff spalling off and like I think at some point somebody might have ran into the pe- the laser beam and it got killed and it was pretty dangerous and stuff and there's all these kind of like um, the safety checks they have to do and the since she has to fly like the president in there and she like almost wrecks him I think but she barely makes it in time because they're under attack from these missiles I mean it's a really good book but then it gets into like oh I was talking about all the spaceships you have to have all the fuel so he found like the next if you go through the ring the Stargate thing there's one star system that's not connected to any other um, inhabitants I think that's like it's like our safe zone like if you ever played any of those video games like EVE Online or something you know sometimes you have one that's like dead ends at a place I don't know why the aliens would have made a ring there but he makes a helium three mine on the sun of that. He makes like one of those um, what do you call those things? I, I, I'm not really thinking of words today. Um, you know those big grids that covers around the planet and like you soak up all the energy from it. Kind of like one of those, or maybe it's just a helium three mine. I don't remember. Anyway, he's like this. Um, he's kind of like the Monopoly man. <laughs> He's like a short, nerdy guy, but he has like this crazy spaceship with a sapphire window. It's made out of sapphire that he mined off of an asteroid. And he's selling all these like um, metals and stuff back to the Earth and making more money that way. And he's got this giant citadel. I think he eventually carves that face into it that you see there. And uh, just for kicks, he carves a face into it. And maybe like the mouth is like the port where all the spaceships come out. And like inside of it, you got like uh, swimming pools and stuff, and malls. It's like a it's a place for the Marines to live and inhabit. It's like a whole inner Earth kind of a deal. It's huge, and uh, so then he has to figure out a way. In the third book, <clears throat> he has to maneuver it in front of the gate so that it protects the. I think he actually sends it through the gate, and he makes a second one of those big giant balls. It kind of gets real crazy, and then he like gets those. They wouldn't even barely fit through the gate. But he has to figure out a way to maneuver it, so he makes like giant springs. I forgot how he like coiled them. But he makes an Orion drive. Have you ever seen an Orion drive? Look that up on YouTube. There's people that do it with like fireworks and stuff. It's basically where you constantly set off an explosion on the bottom of something and it propels it upwards. So what does he use as the explosion? Nuclear bombs. That are constantly being created from one of those um, Glatoon uh, fabricators. I mean, as long as you keep putting the material into it, it will just keep making nukes. And you keep feeding nukes out the back, and you can make this giant planet-sized ball (laughs) kind of move through space. And that scares the shit out of all these other aliens, and they end up finally leaving them alone, I think, and calling an armistice or something. Oh, there's one part. Oh, this is crazy. The aliens actually get through, and they bomb the Earth, and they destroy, like, maybe 70% of the Earth's population or something. And they release this disease on everybody that kills them all off but the side effect of the disease is that it makes the women super horny so then the population kind of recovers because everybody's wanting to have sex they call it Jacobson's disease I think or something like that 
Um, I forgot. There was something about that I can't really remember that was interesting. I think that has something to do with that woman that joined the Marines. Because she had it or something. Uh, there's not a lot of fucking in this book, though. I think I got the cover on backwards on this. Anyway, that's basically that story. I mean, it just keeps ramping up. He keeps building things, and you make things that build other things that build things, and then those things build more giant laser arrays, and you get bigger lasers, drill bigger holes. It's just kind of a good philosophy for business, I feel like, or how you would, I don't know, do things. <laughs>